can kindly enlighten us. Hare Krishna. Om Gyanat Marandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatadine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Payevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavityo Namo Namo Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadatha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare So second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is given the title of Contents of the Gita Summarized, meaning that within the second chapter the main points of Bhagavad Gita are brought out. Essentially Bhagavad Gita is based on three different kinds of yoga. You have Karma Yoga, you have Jnana Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. So within the second chapter, Krishna has given some of the basic points of karma yoga certainly, jnana yoga, and a very brief glimpse of bhakti yoga. Not much on bhakti yoga, a couple of verses. But basically what's happening in the second chapter is Krishna is following up on Arjuna's reasons for not fighting. As we heard, Arjuna has a lot of doubts. You think not, Matthew, who was it? You said he's a Kshatriya, his duty is to fight, right? But Arjuna is thinking, maybe I give up my duty. <laughs> maybe I don't want to be a Kshatriya anymore. He's even thinking, maybe I'm going to be a beggar. <laughs> of course, Krishna tells him that's not really practical. I don't think you'd be very good, a very good beggar. <laughs> be di very difficult for you. Uh, so anyway, Arjuna was intelligent enough to surrender to Krishna, as we have. That Arjuna understood. He was confused about his duty. What should he do? He didn't. This is this problem which we face. We don't know what to do, I don't know, I'm so confused, you know. It's a common scenario, very common in our life, to get confused what to do in this situation. So Arjuna was in this predicament, right on the battlefield, you know, he told Krishna, take my chariot in the midst of the battlefield, I want to see who is here. So Krishna is the chariot driver and he takes Arjuna right into the middle of the battlefield and who does Arjuna see? Drona and Bhishma, you know the people who are very dear to him. Drona, his teacher, and Bhishma, his grandfather. You know, we love the grandfather, you know, grandpa is always merciful. Father is strict, right? Father is strict. But the grandfather is always fun, he's always so nice and sweet, nice old man, you know. <laughs> so uh, Arjuna, and of course Drona is the best, he's Arjuna is the best student of Drona. So Arjuna has that loving relationship for these two people. And then he sees there on the other side, in that 
really doesn't help his uh, situation. It, it just makes him think more about why he shouldn't fight. And Arjuna is really an intelligent person. You know, he's a friend of Krishna. They grew up together and they were always associating with each other and they would talk with each other. They would discuss philosophies. They grew up like that. It wasn't just that they met at, Bhara, at Kurukshetra and Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita, but Krishna and Arjuna were always discussing philosophy. You know, like friends, you know, you grow up and you talk about the thing, you know, you know what each other's thinking. So Krishna could understand the mind of Arjuna. Arjuna did have faith in Krishna, that Krishna really under, knew how to properly arrange the situation, what, what should be done in this situation. So Arjuna surrenders to Krishna. And to surrender to someone is not easy. We see a lot of people have problems in surrendering to someone. You know? It's not an easy thing to do. And even Krishna jokes with Arjuna. Oh, how can you surrender to me? I'm your friend. You know, you can't, you know, we're friends, we're the same age and like that, you know. Krishna was testing. It's a, the, the, the duty of the, the teacher that he wants to see, is this student really serious or is he just talking? Did he, does he really want to learn or is it just words? So Krishna tested Arjuna a little bit. But he saw that Arjuna was really serious and he really wanted to get Krishna's help. And so Krishna began to answer his different doubts, the different reasons why Arjuna didn't want to fight. And one of the reasons why he didn't want to fight was he thought that uh, there's no compassion. I'm not being compassionate. Now compassion, of course, is a very noble quality. We would all like to think of ourselves as being compassionate. Oh, I'm a good person. I never do anybody any wrong. We like to think like that. You know? And Arjuna is thinking that he's not being compassionate if he fights. But Krishna chastises him. He tells Arjuna, you're speaking learned words, Arjuna. You know, you're so learned, you're speaking so nice. But you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. And then Krishna goes on to explain why. Of course, this is not an easy point to understand. Why should we not lament for the live, for the dead? You know, certainly we feel pain. Somebody dies. We feel very, oh, you know, we feel something, it's not a very pleasant thing. We, especially someone we know, somebody who we love, and if, if they die, then it's a very painful experience for us. But on the platform of knowledge, we shouldn't lament. And Krishna explains why. Because for the soul, there's no death. Not only is there no death, there's no birth, right? Najayate mriyate bhakti For the soul, there's no birth or death. Srila Prabhupada always taught us to think on the spiritual platform, to think of ourselves as a soul. You know, if somebody says to you, how old are you? You know, well, why should I tell you how old I am? <laughs> What business is it of yours to know how old I am? You know, we may, we may think like that, you know. But Prabhupada would say, when they would ask Prabhupada, you know, Prabhupada, elderly gentleman coming from India, and, you know, so many disciples and students, and they say, Swamiji, how old are you? He say, I'm the same age as you. <laughs> and then the people are, what? <laughs> they're really taken, they're really bewildered. How could it be? And then Prabhupada would explain to them how we're all the same age. We're all souls. 
but we are thinking we're the body. This is the problem. We're attached, we identify with this body. You know, just like you put, you put on this dress, and we identify with this dress, but we change the dress also. In the same way we change the body, and we're changing bodies constantly. We have had many births, Krishna said, we'll say later, many births, both you and I have had for Arjuna. I can remember all of them, but you cannot. We don't remember that we were all together before in some previous lifetime. Again, we've all come together today. We don't remember, do we? No, we don't. But in the past, in some previous life, maybe some other planet even, we were all, maybe we were birds in the same tree, I don't know. <laughs> but here we are again together today. The point is, Krishna wants Arjuna to understand his compassion was all based on the body. And that was the fault. If we're thinking, I'm the body, we won't be happy. Difficult. Our happiness is very short if we're thinking of the body. We want to experience real happiness, it's there in the soul. So this compassion was, was totally wrong. And anyway, Arjuna is not meant to be compassionate. Arjuna is supposed to be a Kshatriya. A Kshatriya is a manager, administrator, a ruler. He's not meant to show compassion. Compassion is for the brahmana. It's more for the brahmana to be compassionate than a kshatriya. So Arjuna's compassion was criticized by Krishna. And then the second part of the chapter of Bhagavad Gita, after explaining about the difference between the body and the soul, then Krishna will he explains about karma yoga. Karma Yoga, detached work, working without thinking about the result. Very difficult thing to do, you know. But that's a yoga. It's, it's on the spiritual platform. Generally, we don't do things on the spiritual platform. We're more karma kanda, right? We do some puja, we want to get some result, right? We do this, what do I get back? What, what benefit will I get? People will say, if I chant Hare Krishna, what will I get? Will I get a new car? Will I get a bigger house? Will I get a more, another boy? You know, you know, different desires we have. We want these things. What do we get by chanting Hare Krishna? You get love for Krishna. Oh, love for Krishna. I don't know if I want that yet. <laughs> Let me wait. Other things I want first. <laughs> but this is ka karma yoga. Anyway, karma yoga is not exactly going to get us love for Krishna. But what karma yoga will get you is freedom from reactions. Arjuna was also worried about the reactions he would get from fighting. Now we've all done a lot of sins in the past. Nobody, I don't think any of us can say, I, I never did any sin. You know, we're all sinful people. We're here in this material world. Okay, I'm living in Watana Heights. I'm maybe not so sinful, you know. I'm maybe a good person. Maybe. But some sin, because we're here in the material world. We have taken this body. Right? And with the birth means death. One who has taken birth, death is set. Right? What is the death rate? 100%. Do you know anyone did not die? Huh? No, we all have to die. And where will we take the next birth? So this is determined by our karma. 
we get reactions for our activities. But if you do karma yoga, then no reactions, free from sins. But karma yoga, we said, it's on the spiritual platform. It's not material. It's not material. We have to dedicate it to the Supreme Lord. To Krishna, how to do that? Very important, you have to chant the holy name. So chanting, this is the beginning of our Krishna, our spiritual life, if you chant the holy name. So I'm very glad you could come today, give some time for us to speak about Krishna to you. This is how you can spiritualize your life. We want to make our life spiritual, you have to have spiritual activities. Spiritual activities mean read Bhagavad Gita, chant Krishna's name and worship Krishna. This is how we can spiritualize our life. The more we spiritualize our life, the more you get free of the problems of life. The problems of life are there. The miseries of the mind, miseries from other living entities, miseries due to natural disasters, too hot or too much rain, typhoon, earthquake, this problem, that problem, problems are there. But if we spiritualize our life, we will not be disturbed by them. So very simple. Get some beads and a bag. Have you got one? No? Yeah? Just like you have the, you have the iPhone, this is iBag. <laughs> you get your intelligence by chanting of these beats and you do some chanting. Sounds easy, but it's not so easy. You try it. But don't just do it one time. Medicine, you know, you have to take regularly. You don't just take one day and finish. You know, you have to take regularly. So this is the medicine. And then the diet is there, the Krishna Prasad. You eat food, not just any food, not just vegetarian, must offer to Krishna. Right? Sometimes people think, oh, it's all prasadam, it's all Krishna's mercy. But we have to offer it to Krishna. To pray to Krishna, please, Lord Krishna, please accept. We've prepared this for you, please kindly accept. And then we take the remnants of Krishna, prasada, mercy of Krishna. So medicine and diet will help us to get free from the material consciousness. But simple program, easy to say, difficult to do many challenges. We have time, we'll spend hours watching television and movies and so on. If we ask people to chant Hare Krishna for half an hour, oh, I'm very busy, oh, I have no time. We'll spend so much to go to the supermarket and go shopping and go for holidays, we'll spend so much. If we ask people donate for the temple or donate for the food distribution, Oh, I have no money. <laughs> I will watch the cricket match for hours and hours. They say chant Hare Krishna ten minutes. Oh, I'm very busy. No time. So this is the problem. Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga people described where we have a short life, but in addition, we are also lazy. We don't walk up the stairs. We have a nice lift to bring us up, right? <laughs> Thank goodness. To come up on the 30th floor, nobody would come, right? We have to walk up the stairs, right? Uh, so we're late. We are misguided also. We're easily misled. We go off track, people looking for spiritual life can have many problems and they can think, I'm on the right path and they don't know what is the real path. They don't always know. 
So misguided, unlucky. We try. We have a genuine desire for spirituality, but we can often go off track, and we're always disturbed. In this age, people don't have peace of mind. But if you chant Hare Krishna, if you chant this mantra, Hare Krishna mantra, every day you make some time to do this chanting, your mind will be peaceful. You can overcome all the problems of mind. So like that second chapter, Bhagavad Gita, the summary of Bhagavad Gita, the basic points, the main points. Okay, Hare Krishna, any questions? Okay, we can take prasadam then. Everybody patient, waiting a long time. Hare Krishna. Shiva Prabhupada. Maharaj, Krishna has given so many detailed instructions. Mm -hmm. and, uh, is it possible that without studying the Gita, just by chanting, it, uh, to realize them and to follow them? Just by chanting and not studying Bhagavad Gita? Yeah. Because we, many times people don't have the time or they don't have the inclination. Well, the thing is that chanting should be done without offenses. And one of the offenses is to blaspheme the Vedic literature and literature in pursuance of the Vedic version. So if one does not read the Vedas, if one does not read the scriptures regularly, then that is like offending the scripture. And one should also follow the orders of the spiritual master. And the spiritual master orders us that we should read the scriptures regularly. So in order to chant Hare Krishna properly, one also needs to study scripture. Chant, uh, studying scriptures will help to improve the quality of our chanting because from the scriptures we will get sambandha gyan, knowledge of our relationship with Krishna. And if you just simply chant, then it, you can do it, but you have to chant like Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur was chanting 22 hours a day. He would chant three lakh names, uh, not, just, not just a few rounds, not just 16 rounds but 192 rounds. So if you just chant all day, then you're all right. But you know, I can't do that. And you know, I can't imitate Haridas Thakur. Great souls like Haridas Thakur, they just chant Hare Krishna. They can just chant and they're perfect. They realize everything. But I'm not on that platform. I need to study Bhagavad Gita. I need to hear the philosophy. I need to understand why I'm chanting Hare Krishna. If we don't read the Bhagavad Gita, if we don't know this philosophy, then we will, why am I chanting Hare Krishna? Oh, I don't know. Somebody told me to chant it. I just like it. It's a nice song. It sounds good, you know. Who's Krishna? Oh, I don't know. Who's Rama? I don't know. I just chant his name, you know doesn't make any sense. It's important that we should know who is Krishna, what does he teach. So chanting Hare Krishna is part of the philosophy, it's part of the process. So yeah, we do have to chant, we have to, but we have to hear of Lord Chaitanya sent Haridas Thakur and Lord Nityananda door to door to tell everyone, Bolo Krishna, Bajo Krishna, Koro Krishna Shiksha, right? Chant the names of Krishna, worship Krishna, and read the books about Krishna also. Okay, Hare Krishna. Prasada? Okay, thank you very much.